You know something? When I woke up this morning, I didn't think that I'd be asking Jake Fisher from Bleacher Report a couple of NBA questions, but yet here we are. And with that being said, you guys, my name is Brandon, a.k.a. Suns Geek, and if it has to deal with the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to make a video about it. And let's talk about it. That's right, you guys. So Jake Fisher from Bleacher Report was on his podcast, and he was talking to Celtics beat writer from The Athletic, Jay King. And they were talking about how the Boston Celtics, you know, had a, had a remarkable turnaround, you know, leading them to the NBA Finals. And then the last 30 minutes of that podcast, he was taking call-in questions, for, you know, from people listening in the chat. And keep in mind, you guys, that before I called in, I wasn't even using my good microphone. I was drinking my coffee and everything. I was really nervous to ask Jake uh, these questions, and I got a chance to ask him a question about DeAndre Ayton. And also, you guys, I wasn't able to get, like, the full-quality MP3 audio. I had to basically screen record it. Uh, so the, the quality might sound a little weird, but either way, here is me asking Jake Fisher from Bleacher Report a question about DeAndre Ayton. I got you. How are you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. You got it. How can I, help? Uh, I got tons of questions for you that I kind of <laughs> submitted in the chat. Um, first off, I don't know how much you're allowed to like reveal or talk about, uh, but I I talk about the Phoenix Suns on YouTube and everything, and I was wondering what you think DeAndre Ayton's future in Phoenix looks like, and do you think the Phoenix Suns could potentially move into the NBA draft? So. I, I'm honestly working under the assumption that DeAndre Ayton will not be with Phoenix next year. Um, you know, there's someone I just talked to yesterday, though, an assistant general manager of an Eastern Conference team, who pushed back on that pretty strongly. Um, so, I mean, the door is definitely open now. I think for him to leave, which is pretty, uh, which is you know, pretty stark of a, of a turnaround from where things were in last year's finals, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say too too much because I don't know what I'm really have credence to say about the Monty Williams DeAndre in relationship. But I wrote about that a week or two ago, and I do think that is something that you know is, is a bit deeper than just him being benched for the final 17 minutes or whatever it was in that game seven. I, I do think there is some frustration there on both sides, and also like I wrote, you know, people around the league. Multiple, multiple people have told me that some people told them that um, when they brought back, or that when they brought in Bismack Biombo, basically off the street, right? Like he wasn't playing; he was at home. Yeah. He was working out, and 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 CP turned him into a pretty reliable, you know, replacement level rim runner guy off the bench. They kind of saw they kind of saw that as an opportunity. Uh, to potentially, you know, this team's going to get super expensive with Cam Johnson coming up and oh, yeah. all the other money coming coming into play. Devin Booker's new deal is going to come in very soon too. So, I mean, it's not just them. A lot of teams around the league look at the center position as one where they might be able to get away with paying someone more of a mid-level type salary than, than an overall max. So, I, I think a lot of those data points collected together, to me, seem to point to him potentially – Exiting, and there being a lot of interest around the league, so there could be potential sign and trade opportunities for Phoenix to do so. Um, but then again, he was the number one pick, and he is an Arizona product, and um, that was a huge factor, I think, in picking the number one at the time. Um, and they obviously, you know, were two games away from winning the finals a year ago, and were the best team all season long this year. So those are other data points that are leading it going back. But it's just. It's very far from from obviously being a, a guarantee. He's he's resigning, right? And that to me is, is is noteworthy in itself. So in the comment section down below, let me know what you guys thought of Jake Fisher's response about DeAndre Ayton. And you know, I've asked you guys this question like a million times. What do you think the Phoenix Suns are going to do with DeAndre Ayton this offseason? Should we sign and trade him? I want to know your guys' thoughts, comments, and opinions down below. So, you guys, I could have asked Jake like a million Phoenix Suns questions, and I probably should have asked him a second Phoenix Suns question. But for some reason, I wanted to ask him and get his opinion on what he thinks the Oklahoma City Thunder are going to be doing with all their draft picks and what they're going to be doing going forward. And, well... Here's what he had to say about the Oklahoma City Thunder. His answer kind of surprised me, to be honest. The Oklahoma City Thunder obviously have like a million picks for the next 10 years. 
Do you think it's possible that they finally realize, hey, we need to stop tanking, we need to get some players in here, let's move some of these picks? So I guess my question is, do you think they're going to be active during the draft, and do you think they – I don't know how valuable some of these picks are, but like you never know with all the successful second-rounders nowadays. You know, It's like draft picks are kind of like gold. So I guess my question is, do you think – the Oklahoma City Thunder will be um, active during the draft. And also, Jake, thank you so much for answering my son's questions. I was super nervous when I first <laughs> called in. I, I appreciate you, man. So the Thunder, they're obviously a very interesting team. Um, to, to answer your question, I, I mean, I don't I don't think it's, any, it's something that's in the near future plans of the Thunder in terms of trading their picks to go get um, immediate impact veteran win now players right now. I, I, I really don't. Um, I think if any team understands that to get superstar players, there's only three ways, draft, trade, free agency, and that the big markets like Miami and L.A. and in theory New York, um, you know, have better chances at getting those guys on the open market and have even better chances at keeping those guys if they trade for them. Remember Paul George? They swung for him with Indy. They re-signed him to a contract that he still asked out to go to the Clippers. Um, I think of any of, of any team, the, the, the Thunder recognized the most that their best chance of building a sustainable title contender for years, like they did with KD, Russ, and Harden, and through the draft year after year after year. And I, I don't think there's any real. I mean, Sam Presti kind of said something along these lines um, at his end of season press conference, like he. I, I believe they're fully prepared to be one of the worst teams in the league again next year, especially being that you know, Victor Wembanyama out of, out of France is supposed to be one of the greatest draft prospects of all time. He's like a seven. He's like he's like Giannis and Rudy Gobert's body. Um, so and, and can shoot it. So like I, I fully expect them to be right at the top of the line to try to take a crack at him and, and people love. Um, Scoot Henderson too. Um, you know, in this year's draft, m- maybe we could see them use a future pick to move up from twelve. That's, I mean, there's definitely a lot of talk about the Thunder wanting to move up from twelve. Um, so maybe that's how they end up spending one of those future draft picks. But I think that's the only scenario I see them mortgaging any um, upcoming draft capital turn them down the line in this year's draft. So once again, you guys, shout out to Jake Fisher from Bleacher Report. I'll leave all the links down below in the description. Go follow him on Twitter. Go read his stuff on Bleacher Report. Subscribe to the podcast. He does really great work. And Jake, kind of like I said to you when I was asking you the questions, any information that you can give us on the Phoenix Suns, us Phoenix Suns fans truly do appreciate it. And once again, you guys, go check out all of his work. Links down below in the description. And I want to hear from you guys in the comments section. What do you think we're going to do with DeAndre in this offseason? What did you guys think about Jake's answers? All your thoughts, comments, and opinions down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to Hulk smash that like button. And please subscribe for everything Phoenix Suns. If it has to deal with the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to make a video about it. And I'll see you guys next time.